where is energy going? Where is energy right now? We're in a transition and yeah. it's, uh, it's happening quickly. Right. And the fear is all about carbon dioxide, which is growing. Mm -hmm. You know, energy usage by hydrocarbons still is growing, but right. it's not, you know, it's 1% or so per year. Right. I mean, there was a big drop, drop with COVID and it's come back strong. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of coal and natural gas being burned, no doubt about it. Yeah. But solar power is growing by like 40 to 50% every year. Right. So now it's coming from behind, right? It came from zero. Right? Everything starts from zero or just you know, barely above zero, right? And that for solar, that didn't start until 1941. So, and it's been doubling every two years for 80 years. Okay. The doublings add up, right? What it started where? It started as a result of Albert Einstein. Mm -hmm. he, um, he got the Nobel Prize for solar power, by the way. Everybody thinks he was the new guy because of E equals MC squared, which he did the same year. Yeah. But he got his, his uh, Nobel Prize for the photovoltaic effect mm -hmm. and realized that light triggered the flow of current of voltage. And uh, that was his discovery. He had four of them in one year. By the way, his, his wife was pregnant and he was working in a dead end job at the patent office. Mm -hmm. And he comes up with just four amazing discoveries all in that year. So solar solar panels are an invent are basically a result of Albert Einstein. Now the guy who actually first made the first solar panel that was a guy named Russell Ohl, and he was in Pennsylvania and he was a kid. He mm -hmm. was a geek, and he was using shortwave radio, okay. and he was trying to listen in on German submarine communications. He was okay. concerned they were going to bomb the US by submarine. Mm -hmm. So he'd be trying to listen in yeah. and they used a crystal for their radios. Yeah. Well, and he dropped one of his crystals and it cracked. Yeah. And then he noticed that when light hit it, it would trigger an electric current. And so he had, he knew about the photovoltaic effect because of Einstein yeah. the Nobel prize. Yeah. And so he put two and two together and realized that, whoa, the crystal can carry voltage if it's you know if you get the right crystal with light so he made the first uh solar cell and panel filed a patent in 1939 made his first thing in 1941 um so that's when it all began how to get here well to where we are now yeah. well first of all nobody took it seriously as usual and but you know he i guess he kept on screwing around with it in his lab making better and better crystals yeah. and then eventually i think it was taken over by one of the big companies like bell labs or something mm -hmm. like that and they had the idea of using solar panels to help provide rural power to the south in the united states yeah. so this i think it was at the time of the civil rights movement mm -hmm. and so i guess maybe they thought if they gave people better electricity out in the middle of nowhere it would be a way to help people develop so maybe that came from that impulse. I know the main usage though, where it really broke open was when uh, the US and the Soviet Union were in the space race mm. and they're spying on each other and spying on the planet, right? right. From, from outer space, that's what it was all about. Having spy cameras, you know, that's what the satellites were for. Yeah. Sputnik was the Russian one and the Americas was Vanguard. Okay. So in the end, the Americans outlasted the Russians mm. because not only did they have batteries, but they had solar panels. Wow. So the solar panels kept the batteries charged up. And it was a it was a former Nazi who was the one who pushed solar at NASA mm. to put to put uh, solar panels on the satellites. So that's kind of an interesting, weird fact. Solar came to Africa, I believe, from what I understand, mm. um, around the '70s. Okay. So it was it was spreading worldwide in a lot of different ways. Mm. Maybe even the '60s. I could let's talk about the '60s. There mm. was they were uh, it continued to be used as a spy tool. Mm -hmm. uh, the CIA. Uh, put fake trees in Vietnam along the Ho Chi Minh Trail mm -hmm. and on the tops of the trees were solar panels mm -hmm. and that could power their listening devices so they could spy on their the communists 
So they were using, you know, there. I understand the French were, I forgot when, I think this was the 70s. They started giving out solar panels with water pumps mm. uh, in Niger as a way to try to stop Islamic insurgencies, you know, mm. give people water and help them be, have a happier life. The hope was yeah. they wouldn't become, you know, terrorists or whatever. Yeah. So um, that was their hope. That was one of the usages of solar. Mm. Um, and then the other thing was the oil companies became the biggest customers of solar panels. In fact, they became the biggest solar companies. Mm. So four of the top seven oil companies had solar divisions. Mm. And why, you may ask, oil companies are supposed to be the enemies of solar power would uh, would become the top producers of solar panels. It makes no sense right. on the surface. Mm. But here's the reality. They were pumping oil from offshore. Okay, so they got these drilling platforms offshore. Now, if you don't want your drilling platform to get hit accidentally by a ship in the middle of the night, you're going to want your lights on. Mm -hmm. So these drilling platforms are lit up like Christmas Day. Yeah. And But where does that power come from? Giant batteries. And so changing the batteries at these oil platforms is just the major deal. Because mm -hmm. you, know, you can't be running a, 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 an engine there and risk blowing up the whole place, right? You got crude oil. So you want, you know, ideally you're lighting it up with batteries. So anyways, they eventually put solar panels on the oil rig. And then the other wild thing they needed it for was for the pipelines mm. because pipes rust. Mm. And the way to stop rust is to run a little bit of electric current in it. Just a tiny bit of electricity stops rusting, right? So they call it cathodic effect, cathode, mm. right? Cathodic. Right. So they would attach solar panels every several miles, I guess to give enough electricity to prevent rust from building up on the transcontinental pipelines that they ran across the US and Canada to Alaska, everywhere they put solar panels. So that's kind of an interesting thing. So it's just a paradox that here it is, you know, inter-imperialist rivalry, greed, war, imperialism, you know, they're basically having to move to solar so that they can, you know, spy on each other. And then giant oil companies, so they can be forever sucking oil from wherever they can and moving it wherever they need to. They needed solar too. And um, so it's like the old system always brings the new one into existence. That's the important lesson there.